Pastor Adam Carnell here. I got questions from our Ask a Pastor box, and it looks like they're really interesting today. I kind of grouped them based on uh, question type, and I'm going to try and get through all these in like five minutes. So I hope these answers are complete enough. How tall was Goliath? Look that up in 1 Samuel chapter 17. He was nine feet nine inches. And your Bible won't, won't measure him in feet. Your Bible will say cubits in the span, but that's an ancient way of, of measuring height and we measure height today in inches, centimeters, meters, and feet. So he was 9 feet 9 inches according to 1 Samuel 17. Uh, what month was Jesus born? We actually are not positive about the date of Jesus' birth, but we're pretty positive of the date of Jesus' uh, crucifixion and his resurrection based on uh, John's testimony on the Sabbath coinciding with the Passover and also some other internal markers from the Gospels. But in Luke and in Matthew, uh, uh, the, narr the narrative is not quite as clear. We know that he was, he was born during King, King Herod the Great's reign because King Herod the Great is the one who ordered that all the other uh, baby boys of Bethlehem be killed because he was trying to find Jesus and kill him. And we know Herod died in about 4 BC. So right around there is when Jesus was born, though we don't know the exact date. However, since ancient times, Christmas has been celebrated on December 25th. And we know that from a church father named Hippolytus of Rome and also a church father named John Chrysostom of Constantinople who is writing a little bit later than Hippolytus. Uh, here's a question. Why would Jesus descend into hell for three days and go to heaven? He did that uh, to either um, announce the victory of God over Satan and so he kind of went in there in a triumphal way or he went to hell for the exact opposite. He went to hell to suffer hell for our sake so that we don't have to be afraid of hell or he went into hell to trick the devil and actually catch him and then ransom all of us out of hell and all of the people from the Old Testament who died before the Messiah came. So those are kind of the th three of the traditional answers for why Jesus descended into hell. And we get that from uh, church tradition and also from 1 Peter chapter 3. And also it's a psalm. Is it psalm? I should know this. Psalm 16 or 14. Uh, you did not abandon my soul to Sheol or you did not abandon my soul to hell. And that psalmist is prophesying that, that the Messiah will say that one day to God himself. A um, couple questions about faith now. Uh, why do some people not believe? Um, and why are there atheists uh, if it makes, uh, if, why are there atheists if we can prove Jesus is real? Well, that is true. I mean, we can, we can beyond the shadow of a doubt, even if you're an atheist or if you're a Buddhist or a Hindu or, or Muslim, you, you, his history has shown that Jesus of Nazareth was a real historical person. So once that can be established from reading the Bible from other ancient historians like Josephus and uh, uh, Tacitus, a, a Roman historian and others, and you can prove that Jesus of Nazareth is a real person. However, do you follow him and believe he's your Lord and believe that he is God? Well, that comes from, that comes from faith and from a realization of... Uh, I guess we'd say the meaning of life, the purpose of life. And atheists don't believe in God because they maybe have a different way of seeing the world and they haven't had their eyes opened yet to the beauty and the glory of God and to the love of God and the meaning of life. And that's really sad. But we're friends with atheists and we love them and we help them. A um, couple questions about God. Is God a living being or is he the very form of spirit and gospel? I like that. Gospel is, uh, just means good news. Uh, and God is spirit. God is living. God is actually the source of life. So not only is he like a living guy, I mean, we have to think of him much, 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 much bigger than that. He's infinite. He is all of life, all of existence springs from him. And he is pure love. As John tells us in his first letter, God is love. So it's not only does he have love, he is love. Not only does he have existence, he is existence. Pretty mind blowing. How long was God in heaven before he made the world? Uh, when did God have this idea? If so, for how long? Does God know what's going to happen tomorrow? Uh, um, difficult questions about time. Um, but we can say time is a way that humanity, how we understand life and existence, uh, time came into being with uh, the cosmos. So to talk about God before creation or God before time is impossible for us to do as humans because we can't comprehend that. A way to think about God in time is like a line written on a page and God 
God is the page and time is the line and everything in the universe fits on that line, but God is outside of it. What is past, what is present, what is future, God is beholding all simultaneously, which is pretty crazy. Uh, personal question, do your legs get tired when you stand up for a long time and does that outfit get in the way because of the sleeves? Answer is y no to the first part. My legs don't really get tired, but I get really hungry. In fact, I'm kind of hungry right now. And then the outfit does get in the way. The sleeves, the, the, the dress thingy, it's called an alb. It looks like a big white dress. That kind of gets caught in the pew sometimes, and I trip over and I step on it when I walk up the stairs, so that gets in the way. Uh, and then a bunch of questions about um, uh, death. So we got, what happens to your body when you die? Your body, one way to think about it is your body rests in the ground. That's why a lot of graves don't say RIP, rest in peace. Our body and our, and our spirit are separated at death, and our body is kind of lying in the grave waiting for Jesus to return and to raise up our bodies where he will perfect them and transform them and transfigure them and our spirit will rejoin our body. And that's called the resurrection of the dead. And that's what we talk about in church every week. When you die, how long does it take for your soul to rise up? Or when you die, do you rise up right away? Um, I don't know if anybody really knows that. I mean, I guess it's simultaneous. When your physical body dies, your spirit is released. Um, I don't know if we can exactly say that takes you know, 30 seconds or something. It's, it's unnatural. Death is not good. Death is a result of sin. Your, your body and your spirit are not supposed to be fractured and separated, but that happens at death. Is it okay to be scared about death? Uh, knowing that you're going to be in heaven with your loved ones? Yeah, it's okay to be scared. We experience emotions because we're emotional uh, creatures made by God and being scared is okay, but you have to realize that God is is with you when you're afraid and he loves you even when you are afraid or even when you're doubting and he's going to take your fears away and we read um, that he's going to wipe every tear from your eyes which is awesome and finally um, uh, why do we die and should we be afraid of dying uh, well we die because of sin and we should not be afraid of dying although it's okay if you are just just trust that God has everything under control and will and will raise you and raise your loved ones up at the last day. And why does God hurt people if they loved him? Is it just a part of what happens in life? But why? Uh, I'd say God does not hurt people. Uh, sin, death, and the devil hurt people. And since God is love, he, uh, um, he allows us the freedom to get hurt. But um, that's against his plan. His plan, though, was already carried out by Jesus Christ, born of the Virgin Mary, conceived by the Holy Spirit, and Jesus Christ died in our place and suffered for us and experienced shame and being an outcast and being beaten and everything. And so if you're ever uncertain about these questions, look to Jesus. He did everything for us and he walked this road for us. So I hope these answers are good. And until next time, thank you very much, everybody. God bless you.